Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A partial government shutdown is averted and employees are at work. Also tonight, the countdown for the general election begins. And having an escape plan in the event of fire is important. In sports, cyclers take on the North Hills to train harder and better. Stay with us, we have these stories and more on the Channel 2 News. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. We knew it was time to make these when we started asking things like, wouldn't it be nice to be able to get a warm cinnamon roll right now? And why can't this kind of muffin come from the same place as a McMuffin? And isn't your coffee lonely without company from a glazed apple fritter? Well, consider these our three resounding yeses. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, October 3rd, 2022. Government workers and services continue today as the legislature and executive branch passed and signed a new budget. Our Chris Nelson has more. House Bill 22-116 HD2 SS1 CCS1, which is the conference committee and this law would be Public Law 2222. That would be the... With the signature, the NMI has a budget for 2023, last minute negotiations by a conference committee, the CNMI House and Senate, prepared a budget that was signed into law by Governor Torres on Saturday morning, averting at least a partial government shutdown. Vinny Sablon was part of that conference committee. There was a lot of moving parts. Um, we had to take a lot of time, um, you know, a lot of energy looking at uh, different portions of, of, of the budget that was presented to us. This administration identified the funds not appropriated by the legislature, but we are able to uh, locate funding and make it available for our retirees as well as the Medicaid matching of $7.2 million, in addition to the $5 million in our current fiscal year to match Medicaid. Governor Torres used his line item veto power in a few places and says the Senate made a couple of last-minute concessions, including doing away with a proposed CNMI liaison office for medical referral. The biggest thing was the ARPA money, who allocates it, who spends it, who's responsible for it. Tell me about this budget. So basically, uh, the Senate version basically almost went back to the same with what I appropriate, what I sent to the House for appropriation, um, and that the legislature does not have the authority uh, to pass the ARPA fund or appropriate ARPA funds. And I hope that we can put this to rest so that we don't have to go through this same process again of arguing left to right on about ARPA funds because, and I'm glad, and I wanna also thank the 
the House uh, for acknowledging that in order for this budget to move forward, that they do not have the authority to appropriate ARPA funds. And that was, that was the biggest part. And so when you take care of that, everything else was a lot easier to, uh, to handle. Election day is right around the corner and officials are down to the last details. Let's take a look. This coming November 8, thousands of voters will be heading into the polls to cast their vote for the island's next leaders. Early voting for the Northern Islands is currently ongoing. So far, 56% have already casted their vote at the Commonwealth Election Commission's office in Susupi. CEC's Executive Director Kayla Igito states details for early voting for other precincts are already in place. Early voting, we have that secured already, which is going to be at multi-purpose. Precinct 1 through 7 will be at multi-purpose from <clears throat> November 1st into the 7th. Um, we have, um, we're waiting on our approvals from the schools for our election days and um, also from the youth centers. More than 19,000 voters are registered with the commission and a small percentage will be voting off-island. So far we have um, sent out absentee ballots, uh, a total of 1,171 absentees as of Friday last week. Uh, we plan to go ahead and mail out some more this week. Um, we also have a total registered number of um, 19,353 as of today's date. The deadline for absentee ballots is set for October 14, and voters can register online at votecinami.gov.mp. The commission is also in the process of certifying poll workers for election day. Uh, names were submitted last week, Monday, um, from uh, the two recognized political parties, which is the Democrat and the Republican. So we have those uh, poll worker listing names already. Uh, those are potential workers. They need to attend the um, workshop that we're going to have, which will be announced at a later date. Igato says she is confident for a smooth election season as everything is in place. Um, if you're not sure of the polling sites that you're registered for, go ahead and give our office a call. We're more than willing to help you. Uh, also, for any, any concerns regarding confined voters that you um, would like to vote or um, the options of uh, curbside voting. This general election has three candidates running for the governor's seat. If no candidate receives at least 50% of the voters, plus at least one additional vote, the top two may go head-to-head -head in a runoff election. Igato states they are preparing themselves of that possibility. The CNMI counts 51 fires that occurred in 2021. The month of October is dedicated to fire prevention. Fire won't wait. Plan your escape. That is the theme for this month's National Fire Prevention Week. CNMI firefighters from DFEMS and ARF gathered at the governor's office this morning for a proclamation signing ceremony. Fire Chief Jesse Mesa states raising awareness on fire prevention and planning is important these days. Because today's fire is a lot quicker, a lot hotter, and a lot stronger. So for us to come there and do our job, we ask the public to actually take part in that by planning their escape. So that way when we show up, we only have one task, which is to put the fire out, not rescue. The American Red Cross NMI chapter has been a strong partner with both DFEMS and ARF for many years in not only helping fire victims, but adding to the cause of fire prevention. You know, it's a really uh, an honor again and a privilege to collaborate with DFEMS on our smoke alarm uh, program. Uh, I think we've been doing this now for maybe well over 10 years and we've insta installed uh, literally thousands of smoke alarms, you know, to make our homes here in the community safer. And then also, uh, I just uh, can't say enough about the professionalism and the integrity of, of the firefighters here. Uh, every time there's a fire, uh, we respond, uh, whether it's the middle of the night or the weekend, and you guys are always, of course, there uh, in handling, these, uh, handling the families and, of course, the structures and suppressing the fire. Uh, so I 
again, it's uh, just an honor to be working with you guys. Governor Torres signed a proclamation declaring that smoke alarms can send smoke well before you can and that it can cut the risk of dying in a reported home fire in half. And I want to also encourage every household who has smoke alarm, do not unplug it, do not take out, you know, the battery. Um, at my mom's house, every time we cook and it smokes, right, it, it, the alarm goes off. Um, and it comes annoying sometimes. But that's the whole purpose of it, is to make sure that, that everyone's alarmed when there's smoke. So I'd like to, to ask that we continue, and if there's anything that we can do to help um, even provide more smoke alarm to all of our our household. So. A mini firefighter course will be held this Saturday and is open to the public in light of National Fire Prevention Week. Lawmakers up in Washington passes a bill addressing mental health services for schools in the United States. The NMI's representative expresses his support for the legislation. Congressman Gregorio Kalila Sablon believes that students should have access to mental health care. In Sablon's weekly newsletter, he states he joined California Congressman Mark DeSalinier in introducing the Mental Health Matters Act back in May. The legislation includes increasing access to mental and behavioral health care. The bill also creates various grants to increase school-based mental health service providers. Congressman Kalili says the public school system in the NMI serves a high percentage of students from low-income families who may not be able to afford mental health care. This bill would allow the NMI to share $25 million with other insular area school districts to address the issue. The U.S. House of Representatives passed the bill and it now heads to the U.S. Senate for their consideration. All right, coming up, the newly built sports complex in Oliai is getting a lot of attention. Stay tuned. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, Call the hotline at 287-8537. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Oli Sports Complex is recognized by Oceana officials, attracting more opportunities for huge events here in the NMI. The Northern Mariana Islands is set to host the fourth edition of the Oceana Cup in June 2023. According to the Oceana Athletics Association, the OLEI Sports Stadium is currently the best facility in the Pacific. The local organizing committee and athletics federations demonstrated an outstanding ability in hosting the minigames, and the council can't wait to return to Saipan with another huge and great sporting event. The Oceana Cup format is being finalized and will feature teams from Melanesia, Micronesia, Polynesia, Australia, New Zealand, Regional Australia, and the Northern Mariana Islands. The Oceana Cup is scheduled for June 22 to the 24th in 2023. 
Last week, the three gubernatorial candidates took the stage to share their vision if elected into office. One of the questions asked was about medical referral and their take on the issue. With millions of dollars spent annually on medical referrals, how do you plan to expand healthcare services within the CNMI and reduce the number of off-island referrals? You have two minutes. Your time starts now. I would like to thank all of our healthcare clinics, our doctors and nurses across. Thank you for your services. It is important to start addressing medical referral, and we have done that. I have done that under this administration. We are adding MRI and hyperbaric chamber to CNMI. That will reduce 70% of all medical referrals being sent from here in the CNMI. We're also working on getting and expanding our ICU rooms. Expanding our ICU rooms, our operating room, and radiology center. Folks, we, got, we are starting to put all the resources in for public health because I know how important it is to make our healthcare here a number one priority. Once we start eliminating health care being provided outside the cinema, everyone, everyone here that has family will be taken care of here. You don't have to do medical referrals, you don't have to do other fundraising because our MRI and our hyperbaric chamber, expanding ICU, is forthcoming. One of my first priorities as the chair of the Health and Welfare Committee was to work on legislation to restructure and reform our medical referral program. And we worked closely with CHCC and with other stakeholders to develop that legislation because as many people did not realize at the time, there has never been enabling legislation for that program and the governor's office never had the legal authority to run medical referral services in the first place. So we passed that legislation, we had a ton of public hearings, and the idea was to reform the program so that it could be sustainable. And, and that legislation is now sitting with the Senate. As for MRI, that funding needs to go to CHC. It was allocated over a year ago, and the governor didn't start working on it until we started asking, what is the status? And CHCC said, there is no status, there is no money, no updates. Ladies and gentlemen, 20... 18, 2019, the cost of medical referral was close to $20 million. You know where, where the cost is? It wasn't in the medical, it wasn't the doctor. It wasn't the medical cost. It was trapped, the airfare and lodging. Why is it that some of our patients have to wait for three weeks in Guam, four weeks in Guam just to get an MRI? That cost those costs have continued to escalate, and that's why we're here. I'm glad that Esther Munia has taken on the, 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 the medical referral. And it, it happened because the Attorney General told us that the executive branch does not have the authority. Be sure to stay with us as we bring you more of the chamber debate. Sports is up next after the break. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. 
Buenas sports fans. For the KSPN Sports Report, wheels were up and running over the weekend up in the northern part of Saipan. Eleven teams competed in the Saipan Cyclers Team Trial Race on Sunday morning at the last command post in Marby. The race is a 26-kilometer flat course or two laps from Last Command Post to Marpy Landfill, then Bonsai Cliff to Camille Garden Apartment and back. Each team has to leave the starting point in the 30 seconds interval. Nat Bison and Rusty Valino of Team 8 topped this race with a time of 48 minutes and 53 seconds. Second place is Team 10 of Joel Buco and Bobby Villa. They crossed the finish line in 49 minutes and 9 seconds. Hernan Cristobal and Rod Gonzalez of Team 6 finished third. Their time is 49 minutes and 24 seconds. Team 11 of Renren Gaviola and Romy Ampit bagged the fourth place. They finished the race in 49 minutes and 30 seconds. Fifth place is Cesar Fortalazzi and Leo Wanya of Team 2. They clocked in at 50 minutes and 9 seconds. Jay Deco of Saipan Cyclers tells us more about this event. Actually, this race is just a, just a pop-up race that we came up with an idea to do a team time trial race for the riders to sweat it out in a Sunday morning. He explains how this time trial works and the selection process for each team. Our team members, they, consi they were consist of uh, two members and then uh, we did a raffle drawing to determine uh, the member of uh, each team. Deco is also thinking about doing another team race soon. Next race? Uh, we're planning another uh, team race, but it's, uh, we'll do some uh, twist and uh, we'll, it's, we'll be, it will be a surprise. So we'll just post it with the uh, riders. Here are the highlights from this time trial race.
Sir Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're going to go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If you, if you, if you set up in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm going to have Vince do here is extend his arms up here and all he's going to do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. Reach long and push your hips back. So as you can see, he's already in good position. Now he, all he's going to do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's going to do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. And for the KSPN weather report, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms, east wind 11 to 14 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms, east wind 8 to 14 miles per hour. High 86, low 77, the humidity 88%. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms, east wind 8 to 11 miles per hour. High 87, low 77, the marine forecast. Moderate trade winds are expected to become gentle Tuesday and persist through the week. Combined seas are expected to range between 3 and 5 feet through Thursday. East, east wind 10 to 15 knots, wind waves 2 to 3 feet. The east swell 3 to 4 feet. The sunrise will be at 6.06 a.m., high tide 3.10 p.m., low tide 8.07 p.m., sunset 6.05 p.m. All right, now that closes our Monday night edition of the KSPN2 News. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you again on Wednesday.